obviously, places that can be considered promised lands, after the day humans press the self-destruct button, will have to be fully capable of providing humans with the basic elements of life, including oxygen, clean water, food does not belong to the territory of any nuclear power. Whether it is the five Security Council powers or countries like India, Pakistan, North Korea, Israel, it can be said that complete destruction only comes to small countries such as Israel, North Korea, and countries such as America, Russia or China are all strong powers possessing large territories. These countries will likely participate in nuclear war but will be very unlikely to be completely destroyed. The military force they have in hand is strong enough to counter-attack and destroy the person who launched the attack first before this force could cause them irreversible damage. Not to mention the fact that these countries all have large areas, allowing people to evacuate to safe areas when fighting occurs. Even in some countries such as the US, Russia, China, Switzerland and Finland, People also prepare bunkers containing enough food, clean water, and air filtration systems, ready to prepare for situations that occur. Large-scale nuclear war Even in China in the 1960s, because of tensions between the country and the Soviet Union, it was thought that there was a risk of nuclear war breaking out in Asia. Lin Biao, the second most powerful person in the country at that time, even had a plan plan to evacuate the state and key economic activities to the south. That is considered a solution to ensure normal operations for the government and people in a situation where the country is preemptively attacked by the Soviet Union with nuclear weapons. If the all-out nuclear attacks only target the territory, the mainland and its consequences are only large explosions with great destructive power and it is not capable of causing any further harm other than destroying all infrastructure for tens of kilometers around. But the irony is that things are not that simple. Let's learn about the consequences of a nuclear attack with knowledge, it is not simple, but imagine that according to the latest research up to now, only one nuclear warhead is activated from an area. It will create a fireball that looks from afar like a red sunlight shining in the corner of the sky. The explosion will spread out, turning all buildings into rubble, and those at the center of the explosion will return to dust. Normally, most intercontinental ballistic missiles using solid fuel attack from the US LGM-30 Minuteman will carry up to three nuclear warheads or, in particular, Russia's R-36 can carry more than 10 warheads. Bullet. Enough to create an explosion equivalent to thousands of kilotons wherever they land. The devastation from such a nuclear attack could extend the range of people with third-degree burns by 8 kilometers, extend the range of people with second-degree burns by 10 kilometers, and extend the range of people with second-degree burns by 10 kilometers and extend the range of people with second-degree burns by 10 kilometers suffered first-degree burns an additional 6 kilometers, the remaining people at a distance of 85 kilometers can be considered lucky to only be temporarily blind. Furthermore, in most nuclear war scenarios, Ballistic missiles often simultaneously attack industrial centers and military bases scattered throughout the enemy country's territory. In addition, military bases like Hawaii are also at risk of becoming targets of medium-range ballistic missiles. If you are a descendant or related to high-ranking political officials of major powers or a tycoon, you can choose to take shelter in bunkers with food, clean water, and full air purifiers. Enough. For those who are not descendants, no matter how carefully they prepare, it is difficult for them to know in advance where the first nuclear explosions will be. To be able to ensure that you will be standing at a position several hundred kilometers from the center of the explosion. However, the real nuclear disaster only occurs after the attacks completely stop, especially in the attacked country. At this point, the medical system will be overloaded and traffic will become uncontrolled. Even if you are lucky enough to evacuate to a safe place in advance, 
radiation will poison the soil, water, and several tens of millions of tons of smoke and dust rose into the atmosphere. Food, crops, and livestock were severely damaged, affecting neighboring countries. By this time, the country would be clean and food would obviously be important. The only remaining thing that needs to exist, real estate, stocks, gold, silver, and diamonds are no longer important. Areas that are both far away from the explosion and have enough uncontaminated food and water reserves will quickly be filled by millions of victims, creating uncontrollable chaos. Safe lands also quickly become scarce and it is difficult for them to ensure a full life for residents for a long time. Therefore, an area that can be considered safe in the event of a nuclear war must comply with three NOS, including not being located near military targets, not too close to the main territories of major powers. Nuclear pollution and lack of overcrowding lead to the inability to self-supply food in a short time. Those lands must also have fertile land and the potential to find new food sources to ensure residents can enjoy the rest in peace with three meals a day and clothes to wear all day. In China, there is also a relatively large safe area with an area of up to 1,228,000 square kilometers but with an altitude of up to 4,500 m above sea level, forcing many people from the plains to come here. Exclaimed, I can't breathe without oxygen. Returning to the main content, based on the criteria just mentioned, it can be seen that on the territories of nuclear attacked countries and their neighbors, it is very difficult to find a safe enough area. Facing the threat of war. Except for areas such as Williams in France and Angela in England, which have no military strategic significance and are located far away from the mainland, so there is almost no possibility of nuclear attack even though they are only British overseas territories. France, America, but these lands also have quite prosperous economies with GDP per capita ranging from $25,000 to $117,000 for British Bermuda. It is known that these islands also have fresh water and food reserves. There are many residents here who probably don't know how to use electricity or explosives to catch seafood, so you don't have to worry too much about not being able to find food sources to improve your meals in the long run. In addition, these islands and archipelagos are also located far away from the surrounding lands, so they can also avoid the risk of refugees from surrounding countries. Indeed, the overseas lands of France and England can both it is a safe place to escape war and is not so desolate and remote that it would be impossible for civilized urban acquaintances who lack survival skills to live. That doesn't mean that in the old continent of Europe there aren't lands that can be called safe before a war ends. This is where many of the most peaceful and happiest countries are located. Around the world far from potential war zones. The most famous among them are Austria and Switzerland, these two countries can also be considered relatively safe choices because they have both achieved permanent neutrality through special declarations on all countries around the world and fully implement related commitments. As for Switzerland, this country is also surrounded by rolling mountains and the government and people here have also prepared many bunkers. The bunker where necessities are stored is considered an ideal place for them to hide it temporarily in the event of a nuclear attack on NATO or European countries, at least before the necessities they reserve are available. Availability began to become scarce and the flow of refugees began to successfully penetrate into the small territories of these two countries. But if they wanted to go to a safer land completely separate from the NATO European countries with could be the first target of nuclear weapons attack, military knowledge would like to introduce you to the Republic of Ireland. Although considered a NATO member, Ireland is almost completely absent from military activities. Of the Alliance. They don't even have an army. If you see a few young men wearing camouflage shirts and holding rifles near the capital Dubin, please calm down because those guys are only part of the police team. Coast Guard or Defense Unit of the Republic of Iceland. 
The country's dominant military forces also possess a small amount of anti-aircraft weapons, patrol boats, and helicopters, enough to ensure they prevent prevent threats from piracy and terrorism. This island nation is also very far from the US and any other NATO military power, it is also very far from the Russian Arctic territories and throughout history, the country the world's largest country has never chosen to target this island nation, as the name suggests, Ireland. This country is very cold due to its location near the Arctic Circle and the country's average annual temperature usually ranges from minus 2 degrees Celsius to 14 degrees Celsius and very rarely drops below minus 8 degrees Celsius and above 17 degrees Celsius. However, if you are afraid of the cold, you don't have to worry too much because this country is located on a mountain belt. Because of the Atlantic fire, there are many hot spring volcanoes and huge thermal sources. After stressful days with the volatile political and military situations in the world, you can also immerse yourself in beautiful hot mineral pools and open YouTube to follow the news. But if the moments of experience with majestic nature, hot springs, cheap electricity, and free education are not enough to convince you to stay in the cold island nation of Ireland, then most likely the countries of Greater Europe Oceania will be the ideal land for you to take refuge in if a disaster occurs in the Third World. You may not know that Oceania is the continent with the smallest area of the six continents including Antarctica, which has a total of 14 continents. Independent States and Archipelagos Countries these are Australia, New Zealand, Papua, New Guinea, Micronesia, Kiribati, Fiji, Tonga, Vanuatu, Palau, Tuvalu, Samoa, and Nauru. The two archipelagos are the Solomon and Marshall Islands. In addition, Australia also includes 11 foreign dependent territories. American dependencies include Samoa and Guam. French dependencies include New Caledonia, Wallace, Futuna, and Polynesia. British dependencies include the Pitcairn Islands. In addition, the remaining dependent territories are the Cook Islands, Tokelau, Niu, and Norfolk Island. The Mashalai and Sama Islands are all island nations except Australia which own all of the continent's real estate. In any small country in Oceania, such as Solomon Papua New Guinea, you can find wild peace because the nature here is less affected by human exploration activities. If not humans living by the motto of not working but still wanting to eat and having experience in survival in the wild and jungle environment, you can also live your whole life here with the indigenous tribes with a life of hunting, gathering, and fishing. Away from the heat of the war to end all wars taking place across the remaining four continents. If you are too familiar with the modern lifestyle and do not have much sympathy for the primitive life of strange aboriginal tribes, you can also go to Australia or New Zealand, both of these countries are they have a prosperous economy with high levels of science and technology and developed education. They also own a significant amount of essential fossil resources such as coal, oil, gas, and metals. The mineral mining economic development plans of Australia and New Zealand are both considered to be very effective and sustainable, not wasteful like many developing countries. That approach not only helps these two countries displeased environmentalists but also help them preserve resource reserves that could be used to sustain civilization after the Great World War. Third, even in the most unlikely case of a devastating attack on the US ally, leading to a counter-attack that collapses most of the major powers, leaving the world in anarchy and out of control, its inhabitants. Oceania can still be safely protected because in addition to its remote location, away from most major powers, the lands of Oceania are also protected by the armed forces, the Australian royal family has the power. Overall, not inferior to a middle class power. According to what is known until now, the most powerful country in Oceania has an army of more than 60,000 professional soldiers. Belonging to three branches is the Army's Navy and Air Force. 
the most significant of which is the Royal Australian Navy with a main combat force of six DIRS diesel attack submarines, although not of the current attack submarine type. The most modern in the world, its combat capabilities are also extremely formidable, mainly coming from a system of six torpedo tubes that allow it to carry up to 22 Mark 48s equipped with an active guidance system for main attacks. Target corpses from a distance of 8 kilometers. In urgent situations, when it is necessary to defend against the risk of intrusion, each ship is also equipped with AGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missiles and 44 Stonefish mines. It is known that after signing the Trilateral Security Partnership, the Royal Australian Navy will in the near future own advanced nuclear submarines using a combination of US and British technology. In addition, the Navy will the Australian Royal Family is also maintaining operations for 11 destroyers, 4 minesweepers and many support aircraft patrol ships, helping to increase defense capacity against the risk of attack from sea, which is very important. Unlikely. Particularly for New Zealand or any other island nation around Oceania, the US is also ready to dispatch additional Canberra landing ships to support troops in case these countries are threatened with attack. The Australian Air Force is currently there are also famous forces in the world with 24 FA-18 superheroes fighters, 60 generation 5 F-35 a stealth fighters, 12 EA-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft and many transport aircraft. Other training downloads. The last images of the military forces of the land of kangaroos have ended our journey to explore the safest lands in the world after World War III today. Thank you for coming along. To the end of the journey.